you can arrange for your doula to meet you at your home. You can labor with your doula at home. So that's some support. And that's an alternative, especially if they're not going to be the ones to go with you to the hospital. They can be there at home supporting you and getting you through this time, helping you stay hydrated, helping you focus and just be present. Kobe has a question. Let me unmute you. Hello? Can yes, hear? I can hear you. So I am having a home birth and I was just wondering if, like some of the things I'm kind of catching how I can tailor it for me being at home. Mm -hmm. But is there a segment or like stuff that you're gonna go through for home birth specifically? So all of this can be applied to home birth um, specifically. Right now, we haven't even left the house in terms of um, all of these preparations. In terms of um, your bag, you won't need a bag, but you still want to pull those same supplies out. Um, you definitely want to speak to your midwife um, about their birth kit because there are particular medical supplies that your midwife will need. And they typically say, go online and order this birth kit and it will have, you know, the chucks and the wipes and the panties and all those things that the hospital typically provides are going to be in your birth kit. Or they'll give you a list of things to gather as you're preparing. But um, in the home situation, it's just a little bit easier because you don't have to um, create the space as much as you do because you're already in a space that's comfortable to you. A lot of the work that we do in going into the hospital is making it a relaxing, comfortable space because it can be very sterile and it can cause us to be very tense. When you're at home, it's your castle, right? Like you, you good. You know where everything is. You're comfortable in your bathroom. You know how your water works. And so it's, um, it's really just you being in your space and being comfortable that we're trying to recreate in the hospital opposed to the home birth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wonderful question. And um, if anything else comes up specific to home birth and I don't mention or you have another question, please go ahead and ask it. Okay, so that's early labor and warm up labor. Let's keep it going because once you get out of early labor, you're going to be wondering how do I know if this is a real contraction and it's starting to um, be time for me to go to the hospital. So this short video has um, just visuals about how to time contractions and when to go to the hospital. video you can find it on YouTube but I liked it because it gave that arc of like
trying to figure out what's really going on and how you know. So I think one of the things that we see a lot of popular culture is they're like, the contractions are five minutes apart and this, and this is happening. And that's like a key symbol when they start talking about this timing. But it can be a little bit confusing in terms of how do you place that timing. And the key is you're tracking the interval and the duration. So the interval is from the start of one contraction to the start of another. But hopefully your contractions aren't coming back to back to back. You get a little rest in between. And so you're actually going to do that duration, meaning you start a timer, you have a contraction. Let me bring in my pregnant model here. This is my pregnant model. Her name is Kyrie. She's my baby. <laughs> and so Kyrie will say, ooh, I'm feeling a contraction coming. I'm going to start my timer. And I'm here to help her through it. Let me know when your contraction ends. Okay? <laughs> Tell me to say it stops. It's so it's okay, it stopped. Now, I'm not going to stop my timer. I'm just going to make note that that was one contraction. Maybe it lasted. That was probably only like 15 seconds. And we're going to keep that timer going to see when the next contraction starts. She's really early in labor. She's laughing and smiling. She's still cute. You know what I mean? Like, we, we know she's not having this baby anytime soon. This is very early labor. 30 minutes might pass. We're watching, what are we watching on TV while you're in labor? The Lion King. We're watching The Lion King. So we're gonna watch The Lion King. Simba was born, still not another contraction. You know, everything the light touches still hasn't had another contraction. And then all of a sudden the hyenas attack and ooh, another contraction. So that was 30 minutes apart for a contraction that was only 15 seconds long. We can say with some assurance, that's early labor. You're doing pretty good. Keep it going. Now we don't have to time the contraction through the whole movie. We can only do about an hour and get an idea of what the contraction pattern is. Now, say for instance, her contractions were more serious. This is more heavy now. And they're coming a little more consistently. So the contraction comes and you close your eyes. There's no smiling. It's like, you're hearing her breathe. There's some rocking happening. You see that she really needs to bring her attention inward. We're gonna time that. And you may be able to see where the contraction is ending because nobody wants to be harassed. Like, is it still going? Is the contraction still happening, right? We wanna, as birth partners, we wanna be there to support, to say, okay, keep breathing, you're doing great. Let me pause this movie so we don't have, in the jungle, the mighty jungle playing in the background. We wanna put all of our energy on her. How you doing? All right, is that contraction over? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one was about 30 seconds long. We're gonna keep that timer going until another one hits. Hit it. Nala then showed up, right? They in the jungle. Can you feel the love tonight? Right, we working our way through the Lion King and then boom, another one hits before they can even get back to Pride Rock. What's going on? Boom, contraction. That time it was only 10 minutes in between. So now we wanna keep that timer going because we see that there's a change in the rhythm, right? So at first it was every 30 minutes. Now we're up to every 10 minutes. She's getting a little more um, uncomfortable. And we wanna let you know, when was that contraction over? Is that one done? Oh, it's still going. This one's significantly longer. You're doing great. Trust your body, positive affirmations, gentle touch, stroking down. These are all things that can help relieve. Some people like scalp massages. All of these are measures that we can do while we're still at home and still early. All right, you look like you're a little less tense. Is your contraction over? Mm -hmm. Wow, that one was 40 seconds. And we're gonna keep with that pattern. Now there's some apps out there that you can use. There's, there's tons of con um, contraction counting apps. Um, I like full term. And the key is, well, I don't even say it's key because things change over time, right? Some people say 411 is the rule if it's lasting for four minutes. Um, 
every four minutes lasting for a full minute and been that way for an hour, then that's typically time to check in with your doctor. If it's your second, third, fourth baby, you may want to check in a little bit earlier because this process goes much faster um, depending on if your body has been through it before or not. Um, some other recommendations for first time moms are if they're three minutes apart. The key is trusting your body and knowing that you're feeling this change. Um, typically in active labor, you're gonna be less friendly, less engaged with those around you. And that's a typical sign. If I'm on the phone as a doula and I'm talking to someone and I talk to them, let's say for 10 minutes and I hear them in early labor, their contractions are gonna sound like, oh, I'm having a contraction that's coming. But when they're actually in active labor, it's going to be more of a silence and more like instinctual sounds. Like, mm, oh, you don't even have to ask if they're having a contraction. It's very evident. And so that's when you're typically gonna be making your way to the hospital. And once again, every hospital experience is different. In terms of a home birth, you're gonna to wanna to have been in communication with your midwife and your doula when your contractions start, you'll be checking in with them. And they typically come to you when you are in active labor as well. Your doula can be there earlier, but typically your midwives are gonna to wanna to know when you're in more active labor. So this same thing applies, except for you're not having to leave the home. So um, you wanna call ahead, check in with your birth location and say, hey, this is what's going on. Do you think that it's time for me to come in? and they'll communicate with you about um, whether or not they think it's time for you to come in. Regardless of what they think, if your instinct is telling you that something is up and you need to get to the hospital, always listen to your instinct. If they send you home, better safe than sorry, 